On today's episode, Ford's Farley on the auto industry, structural problems abound. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. Speaking at the recent Wolf Research Global Auto Conference, Ford CEO Jim Farley was candid about the current situation at the Blue Oval. Dysfunction and $2 billion left on the table during the fourth quarter were mentioned, but Farley identified the real problem as insufficient improvements in efficiency in engineering, manufacturing, and supply chains. Now, it was a candid admission by a corporate CEO that troubled manufacturing companies can't simply cut their way to profitability. At Ford, CFO John Lawler declared that the company has a seven or eight billion dollar cost disadvantage to class leading rivals. That's three to four billion in material costs, one billion in warranty costs, and three billion in structural costs. Now, fixing this will require something that Farley calls huge transformations. But what does that mean? In manufacturing, there is no quantum leap in automation technology readily available that will dramatically lower the cost of assembling an automobile, as Tesla has discovered. Similarly, there is no way to significantly reduce the amount of basic inputs like sheet metal, glass, rubber, and plastics. Now, pre-COVID, globalized supply chains already operated on a just-in-time basis, and outsourcing of large segments of every motor vehicle, well, that was common practice. Broken supply chains have increased these costs, but it will take years for regional and domestic suppliers to become productive enough to bridge the labor cost gap that China offered. Now, bureaucracy has been attacked at all three Detroit 3 automakers with waves of layoffs and retirements for over a decade now. And as more and more players enter the U.S. market, already thin margins get even tighter, despite the short-term pricing power offered by vehicle shortages. So what can Ford or any other auto manufacturer do? Now, on the margin, better quality control can reduce some costs, and all the majors are looking at uh, direct sales models that would claw back some dealer margins, although admittedly, dealers don't make much money on new car sales as it stands right now. Now, if Farley was to ask me, and he hasn't, I would suggest that the marketing team needs to reinvent the automobile in a fundamental way. Now, 25 years ago, Chrysler had the right idea with the China Concept Vehicle, or CCV. It was a daring project to essentially injection mold the entire body in white in halves and assemble them like a gigantic plastic model kit. Now, I urged them to produce it at the time, but for numerous reasons, the project was shelved. The primary reason given was that Chrysler felt that consumers would not buy an automobile that couldn't be produced with a Class A finish, something that the current generation of flat and semi-gloss colored cars and light trucks would suggest is no longer true. Or maybe additive manufacturing is the way forward. It would help significantly if engineers can find a way to reduce the insane proliferation of microprocessors in modern automobiles. The shift to software-defined systems has drastically increased complexity. I do not believe it has been a significant cost reducer either. So is there a market for drastically simplified, low-cost, reliable transportation? In a world where people will literally pay thousands of dollars for advanced technology in their handheld device, I argue, yes. Now, my smartphone can do everything I need my automobile to do except get me from place to place. But instead, I'm forced to pay tens of thousands of dollars to buy redundant capability in my car. So is there a market opportunity here? Well, I think so. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering video series for the manufacturing professional, visit engineering.com TV to watch exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.